desk. They're trying to enroll in their kids' classes and they're dealing with all the bulk crap. The Black Lives Matter narrative. I was enemy number one for telling kids about talking about Black Lives Matter. Good morning, good morning, good Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am your hostess, Sharonda Hill with True Fund Financial Services, and welcome to our National Wednesday webinars. This week, our topic is certifications, how to obtain them, and find opportunities. Again, I am Sharonda Hill, and we have with us today um, Ms. Julie Hartman. She is co-founder and certified proposal manager with B2G Victory. We're going to hear from her after I go over a brief overview about who is True Fund. True Fund Financial Services is a U.S. Treasury certified community development financial institution, CDFI for short. Established in 2005 with headquarters in New York City and field offices in Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, and Georgia. To date, our lending outcomes are totaling over $40 million in capital, dispersed to over 150 small business owners, therefore increasing their ability to access affordable capital and creating over 500 jobs. So what do we do here at True Fund, you may ask? Well, we are a small business and nonprofit lender. True Fund originates small business loans ranging from $50,000 to $5 million. These loans are not profitable for most banks, but they meet the needs of small business owners seeking capital for fixed assets, inventory purchases, leasehold or capital improvements, hiring, marketing, and other operating expenses. True Fund works to achieve this mission by combining comprehensive business development services, business advisory services, technical assistance, with capital investments. The types of loans we offer are small business loans, contract mobilization loans, long-term contractor loans, and our real estate acquisition lending product. So with that being said, I'm going to pause and stop sharing. And I'm going to hand it over to our subject matter expert, Ms. Julie Hartman, would be to G victory. Take it away, Julie. Thanks so much, Sharonda, for having us back. We we love to do work with True Fund. We have been part of the True Fund family uh, since 2020. So we were able to to start this partnership during the pandemic, and it's been wonderful to continue to grow it, as well as to see all of the great things that True Fund's doing in the communities of which True Fund has made a dedicated effort to, which are communities all across the nation. So today we're gonna talk about certifications and how to obtain them and find opportunities. So if you could just let me know what state you're in. Let's do a little state roll call here real quick. So let me know um, the name of your company, your name, and what state you're in. So we can kind of get a flavor of where we've, we've got tons of different registrations from New York and Georgia and Alabama and Louisiana and Texas. So let's see, let's see how the representation um, shakes out as we talk about um, the specifics of what we're going to cover in our two hours together. Um, I was sharing with um, Sharonda that, you know, we could do all day about certifications and, and contracts, but we only have a few hours. Um, and so I'm going to try to condense just so much information, but not make it overwhelming for each and every one of you. But most importantly, resources after our time together today to help you be successful. 
So we're going to talk about overviews and benefits of certifications, things to consider, what you need when you're going to go get a certification, mistakes to avoid, as well as the difference between registration and certification. And now after that, once you're ready, where do we go find the money, right? Where are those contracts? Where are those opportunities that we can maximize and leverage the certifications that we have? A little bit about myself. Um, I'm a certified woman business owner. I'm like each and every one of you. We have our woman-owned certification and we have our small business certification. Um, this is the second company that I founded. And the first company, we grew uh, exponentially through government contracts. It was a marketing agency and I was um, able to successfully sell that and exit it. And over my 20 years of doing government contracts, we've been able to secure $4. billion worth of awards for clients. So we know this process. We know um, the roadmap for success and the roadmap for victory. And that's what we want to share with you. Just like you're taking advantage of the free education that True Fund has been able to provide, I've been able to do that as well. And it really does make a difference in your business. So I really encourage you after today to find additional resources that support women, minority, and small businesses and leverage those. Um, I'm not alone. I have another co-founder, uh, Susan Repka. And Susan is actually presenting right now um, with the University of Houston. And here's our contact information. We want to make sure to connect with you. We want to um, celebrate our successes together. Um, we know that life and business doesn't happen between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And so we developed the B2G Victory Portal, which helps businesses get access to information 24-7, right? So you're dedicating a pretty good chunk of your day um, with me and with True Fund, but what happens if it's a Tuesday evening at or morning at two o'clock, right? Or Saturday afternoon when you're working on things. So we built the B2G Victory Portal to complement and supplement all of this other education that you've got. Um, there's blogs, there's videos, there's um, an events and education calendar, there's frequently asked questions a huge glossary to help you understand all of these words. So because you're here today, you'll get it for $25 a month instead of $50 a month. And here's just a, a screen capture of what the Victory Portal dashboard looks like. And you can see that that first event uh, for today is this actual True Fund event. There's tools and resources. And as we go through the information today, I'll show you some additional examples. So if I went to the portal right now and I typed in certification or I just did the check for certification because that's what our focus is this morning, you can see that there are blog posts on certifications, then there are events and videos on certifications there, as well as frequently asked questions, as well as if you wanted to learn the history of certifications. So we wanted to make sure that you have resources to access any time that you need them. We've got FAQs, frequently asked questions, but with those questions, we've got answers. We're taking time today to improve ourselves and to build capacity in our business. And it doesn't stop. So we want you to continue. And as we go through this information, think about what are some quick wins um, that I can maybe start this week or next week, right? Maybe after the holiday. How am I going to, as we talk about this information, whether it's a certification, a registration, or even a contract, is that something I am going to put into my business um, later on in this quarter? Because we're still in Q3. Am I going to put it in to action, right? Because it's all about action in Q4, or maybe it's a long-term stretch goal that I want to get to. So I'm going to put that uh, for Q1 of 2025. So once again, as we go through the information in each section, please take some time and pause um, and think about 
What did I learn? How will that benefit my business? And when am I going to put that into action? And if you want to hold yourself accountable or maybe someone else on this call, you could even put it in the chat as well, right? All right, let's get started. What are certifications, right? Because we hear that word a lot. And we want to talk about just certification overviews before we get into all of the details. So when you hear the word certification, what that means is it is some agency that is validating something about your business. So for example, if I wanted to get my veteran owned certification, the business must be 51% veteran owned, operated and controlled, as well as the veteran must hold the highest position and receive the highest compensation. If I wanna have a woman certification, or if I wanna get a woman certification, or if I want to see if I'm qualified to be a certified woman-owned business, typically you need to be 51% owned, controlled, operated, and managed by a woman or women, right? A group, okay? So if I had a business and it had five, five members, five owners of the business, and one was a male, but the other four were female, and it was equally divided, 75, 75, 75 were women, and the 25% was male, they would be eligible for women-owned certification. So continuing here on what certification validates is if it's 51% owned, operated, controlled by a minimum of a U.S. citizen, whose ethnic background is at least 25% Asian Indian, Asian Pacific, Black, Hispanic, or Native American. So it can be any of those, or, right? Asian Indian, or Asian Pacific, or Black, or Hispanic, or Native American, okay? So those are the um, different types of certification regarding veteran, woman, and minority. There's yet another type of certification, which is a small business certification. And many of you on this call today will qualify for the small business certification because this is against the SBA size standards. So for example, if I had a janitorial company, if I, my, if, excuse me, if my annual revenue was under $20 million a year, under, I would be considered a small business. If I was an engineer, my business, in order to be considered small, would need to be under 15 million. So when you hear a small business certification, it is not a micro business, it is a small business according to the SBA size standards, which typically those two criteria are either revenue size or number of employees. We have the small business size standard list on the B2G Victory portal. So you can access it, put in um, a, either a keyword for your business or your NIGP code, and it'll tell you what they are. 99.99999% of all of the businesses we interact with qualify as small businesses. And as we wrap up this section, I really want to stress that certification is not wall art. Just because you get that piece of paper and you put it in a frame and you put it in your home office or maybe it's in your reception area, it is not wall art. Put it to work. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Taking a little bit deeper dive on certifications, it might seem a little bit like alphabet soup. And if you're new to the government contracting world or supplier diversity in the corporate world, you might think this is alphabet soup with all of these different acronyms. For example, an MBE would be a minority owned business. A DBE is a disadvantaged business. An SBE is a small business enterprise. So these different acronyms um, are all defined on the B2G Victory Portal for you as you're going through, maybe you're Googling or maybe you're reading a document 
or maybe you're at an event and somebody uses any of these acronyms, you can go straight to the portal and know exactly what they mean. So there are certifications on different levels. So you've got your federal certifications or your national certifications. So these certifications are used, like I said, on the federal level with the federal government or national certifications um, like the HMSDC or the WBENC certifications, which are used on a national level, like with Shell or with Target or with Walmart or other businesses um, that have supplier diversity goals. Um, on the state level, so each independent state has their own certifications. And you can see by these logos here, we've got Texas represented, we've got Louisiana, New York also has it, um, Georgia, as well as Alabama, just to give you some examples. And we're gonna take a deeper dive on each one of these as well. Then you can also get certifications on the local level. So like with your local city. So Savannah, Georgia has its own certification. The city of New Orleans has their certification. City of Austin here in Texas, as well as um, Atlanta has certification to focus on taxpayer dollars that go back to taxpayer local owned businesses that meet their certifications. So on the state, local and federal level, you might be eligible for a variety of certifications. So you, for example, you could be eligible for a small business certification on the federal, state and local level as well, okay? Lots and lots of, of certifications um, out there. So why would I even want to get certified? Why, why do I even want to do the research to see if, if this would benefit me or, or my business? Well, there's quite a few benefits to certification that can give you a huge competitive edge to grow your business, build capacity, as well as give back to your local community. It allows you to diversify your customer base. And just because um, you are maybe right now just selling to the retail market, well, there might be an opportunity for you to sell your product to a local school district. If you are currently in the commercial space, maybe you want to, maybe if you're doing painting um, in, in the commercial space, like for office buildings or something, well, Every government agency has an office building. So you could very easily diversify your customer base from doing private office painting into government office painting or renovations, those types of things. So start thinking about what you do and the potential that you could grow and diversify your customer base, whether that's in the government space or in the large corporate um, supplier diversity space. For example, we have a client who does catering and she was able to diversify and she won a contract with Amazon. So she has a pop-up at the Amazon distribution centers a couple days a week. And then she also caters for um, events, large events at a local um, university here, University of Houston, right? And so she started her catering business doing weddings, and party catering, and now she's been able to diversify and her business has grown exponentially. Certifications also provide you the opportunity to increase uh, the marketing and awareness of your business. So once again, the more people know about your business, the, able, um, the ability you have to scale. Just like True Fund today in providing educational and mentoring opportunities, Different certifying agencies have scholarships, they have webinars, and they have additional sessions and conferences that can help supplement not only the education that TrueFund is providing for you, but also through that certifying agency or organization. In tandem with the education and, and mentoring are the networking opportunities and different events. And then there's a directory listing. We all know that it's about getting your name out there. So when you are registered, you get entered into a directory. 
Um, we've got a director on the B2G portal, different government agencies, as well as supplier diversity departments have listings as well. So your business is able to get on those listings. So in summary, when you get certified or if you're um, considering getting your certification, there is an entire support system that wants you to be successful and is behind you every single step of the way. So on the portal, if I search certifications, I can see um, here, and the first thing that pops up is certifying your business benefits you need to know. So there is a blog post that goes over and provides additional detail on the certification benefits that I just discussed. Any questions? Sharonda, help me um, if there are any questions that pop up in the chat. All righty. So different types of considerations, because remember, I talked about that there are certifications on the state level, the federal level, the local level. There's all sorts of different certifications. Well, the most important thing to consider when you're looking at your certifications and which ones to get is you need to take a step back. Look at your business plan, look at your business model and your business focus, right? And that will help you determine your certification success. If I am, if I have a bookkeeping company and I want to be able to get certified and provide bookkeeping services or auditing services, am I going to do that nationwide or am I going to just do that here in Houston? Right. And then depending on my business plan, my business model, my business focus, if it is just in the state of Texas, then I can focus on getting my Houston certification as well as my state of Texas certification. Now, let's say I can do it nationwide. Right. Well, then I could also consider getting my national certification or if I lived in Alabama. Right. And I did. Um, IT, can I just do that in Alabama? But I think what's important is for you to think about what your capacity is. And you'll know what your capacity is as well as your growth trajectory when you look at your business plan, your business model, and your business focus. So when I look at that, it will help me determine what my uh, certification considerations are, right? And then how much time am I going to spend? And then there is a video um, on certification considerations. Also on the portal are the listings of all of the different certifying agencies. So once you've determined where you want to get certified, you can go to the portal. You can sort it by either federal, state, or local, as well as the different certifying categories. Um, because like we talked about, well, what, what builds that certification eligibility? So if I think I'm eligible for one of those categories, I can go to the portal, I can search by location, and then those categories, and it will show up. So we've got a question from Ro that says, how long does it take for each certification and which area should we focus on first? Lastly, second question, um, how much time and money should we budget for this? Each certifying agency has a different time frame, And so some certifying agencies, once you get everything together, can do it in 90 days. There are some certifying agencies that are behind and there's a backlog. For example, the state of Texas is backlogged almost right now for six months. So if I wanted to go get my state of Texas certification and I apply today, I would be notified in six months, right? Um, and so what area should you focus on first? Well, if you go to your business plan and you think about what your business capacity is, I would start there. Typically, it's much easier to get a certification on a local level or a state level, as well as opportunities if you're new to government space or new 
um, to providing your services to supplier diversity. Um, say you want to get your products into Target, for example. Um, if you wanted to go into Target, then I would get your minority or your woman-owned certifications um, through the NMH NMHC or the WBEA. And I'm going to show some additional details on that. Um, how much time and money should we budget for this? Um, time, it takes a bit of time, um, probably 10 or so hours to get all of the materials together for your first certification. And then 50% of that information you'll use um, for other certifications. And I've got the uh, most commonly asked um, and commonly requested documents on, on a subsequent slide. And then do certifications extend to nonprofit businesses? That is a state by state determination. Um, some states will let you, if you're a nonprofit, get certified depending on your board makeup. Some states will not allow a nonprofit to, to get their certification. So it really determines, um, it really is determined state by state. So the top considerations are client needs. So just like when you're going to revisit your business plan and your business focus, what do I provide? What does my company do and who buys it, right? So when you visit your target audience that you have identified in your business plan, do they buy what you need? And I'm going to show you how to do some research in your local area um, on the local, state, and federal level to see who the buyer is of what you provide and, and, and if it is a good match for your business with that agency. Time frame. we already talked about this just a little bit. Um, and we always say, get the certifications before you need it. And that's why when I talked about your business plan, where do I wanna go, right? In one year, three years, or five years, if I wanna grow my business in the government space, or with large corporations, maybe it's Dell um, computers, for example, then I need to get that certification now because we talked about it. Some agencies take 90 days, some take six months. It just depends. And when you go to that agency's respective website, it will tell you about um, the average time frame that it's taking to get your certification. A site visit. This scares some people, and I don't want this section to scare you, because how many of you are a home-based business? I am, right? Um, so they may come and do a site visit in your home, or you have the option to say, no, I don't, and I just want to do it virtually. Um, and what that does is that just, it's it's an opportunity for the agency or the organization who does the certification to make sure that that 51% owned, managed, those criteria are indeed applied to that business. So the site visit can be virtual or it can be in, in person. And some agencies are even not doing site visits anymore. But once again, when you go, and I'm going to show you um, different certification examples for every single state, as well as some local examples as well, it'll tell you whether they do or do not do a site visit. Renewal terms. How often do I need to renew my certification? If you are going to get your woman-owned certification through the W. BENC, which is a national certification, it gets renewed every single year. If, for example, the state of Texas, HUB, H-U-B, which stands for Historically Underutilized Business, if you want to get that certification, it's good for three years, which is great. Um, the SBA just changed it that the EDWOSB and the WOSB certifications which are for women-owned certifications, are now a three-year term where they used to be just one year. Okay, so that's another thing to think about is how do I want to use this certification to grow my business? And then how often do I need to renew it? 
And the last and final consideration, um, which was asked as one of these questions, is processing fees. How much is this going to cost me? Any government certification, whether that's through the SBA, your local state, or your local agency, maybe that's the city, or maybe that's your school district, will not charge a processing fee. On the national level, if you go through the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council, the WBENC, they have a processing fee. And it is determined on the size of your company. Um, and each agency um, on their site, those two agencies will tell you um, what the scale is. And typically, um, most businesses fall within the four and $500 range. But remember, I talked about those certification benefits. Um, I know that here in Houston for a while, the local chapter, the HMSDC, was waiving those fees as well. So don't be afraid to ask if there is the possibility to get those fees waived. And here's a secret. You don't know unless you ask. So if you ask, you can get those fees waived. Sometimes right. it depends. Sharonda, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll add something, Julie. Um, if you are looking to be certified through the NMSDC or the MSDC in, in your area, sometimes they do have um, scholarships to mm -hmm. to help you to pay for those certifications. Yep. So like Julie said, nothing beats a failure, you better try. So always ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we've got another question. Um, should we hire a consultant to set these up for us? Or is this something we can do? As I have had people reach out charging anywhere from $500 to $1,000. <sighs> um, gr great, great question. You know, time is money. Right. Um, and I think that is just a personal um, choice. There are agencies. I mean, there are companies out there that um, will review your documents and help you through that process and help you get prepared. So remember, those consultants don't actually do the certification. They help you um, get everything together. Um, Susan, actually, our co-founder, is former director of the WBEA here in Houston, which certified half of Texas. Um, she is a certification guru and can do it with her eyes closed. Um, if you do it by on your own and you submit, so let's use um, the state of New York, for example. If I get all of my stuff together and I do it by myself and I submit and I'm missing a document or um, my legal documents aren't correct, or I forgot to sign a document or whatever, um, then you may go back to the end of the line, right? So some agencies will put you kind of in progress off to the side. Um, other agencies will put you back at the end of the line. So it's really important um, to when you submit it, have everything together. And so that's what the consultants are doing um, and is and are helping you um, get everything ready. So let's jump in to some certifications. So the first one is the veteran owned certification. And this is, we're going to start at the national level with everything. And then I'm going to give you each specific state. Um, veteran owned small business VOSB or the service disabled veteran owned business. And this is um, once again to the SBA size standards. And when you go there, you are actually, you know, when you're going for that certification, um, once again, that you are, you know, saying that I am a 51% veteran owned um, and all of that criteria. And I'm going to um, put that in the, the group group chat and there's the veteran owned. certification. And once again, this is a national certification um, through the SBA, right? And then the next one is hub zone. And hub zone determines if your business is in a federal hub zone. And that stands for historically underutilized business zone program. There's 
pretty um, extensive certification criteria for this. This map just kind of shows you um, which areas are in a hub zone and which are not, but you can go straight to that website that I just dropped in, put in your address and see if your business is indeed in a federal hub zone location. And then there are some other criteria um, for, for that. I already touched on this certification and this is um, through the SBA. And when you go to the website that I just dropped in there, beta.certify.sba.gov, it is, and they've got this great, am I eligible tool? So you'll answer a series of questions and it will let you know which certification that you're eligible for. So the woman owned small business program is a certification offered at the national or federal level. Um, and their goal is to award 5% of all federal contracting dollars to women owned small businesses each year. So you'll go there, you'll answer the questions and see if you are eligible for either the woman owned certification or the economically disadvantaged woman-owned certification. And keep in mind, if you are interested in the woman-owned small business, excuse me, if you're interested in the economic disadvantaged woman-owned small business certification, they're going to ask um, for a lot of information regarding your personal net worth, as well as if you're married all of the information of your spouse as well. So if I had to choose between either one of these certifications, the easier one to get is the WOSB versus the EDWOSB. And when you are talking to your local um, women's business center, um, you can maybe bundle some of these certifications as well. Um, and, and see which ones um, that, that you can bundle together. So you might be able to get your woman-owned certification from the WBENC as well as your WOSB from the SBA, right? So once again, ask questions with whatever certifying agency you're going with. And I saw somebody pop in um, in the chat that this is what they provide. So this is awesome. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask if, is there reciprocity or what other um, certification can I bundle with? Mm -hmm. We uh, have a question in the chat, yeah. Julie. Oh, good. Um, if I use a virtual office that is, uh, that is not qualified for hub, can I use my home address? That's a great, great question. Um, it is determined on what your business office is. So if you would do that, then you would need to um, put your home address as your business office on all of the documents that would need to be, and it needs to match on your tax return, on your um, application, on um, if, if you had like a, a, a lease or an, an electric bill or whatever. So you're going to need to provide additional information that shows where your business operates. You're probably going to need to, if you've got your address listed on your corporate documents, if, you're, if you collect sales tax. So that address has to match in multiple places. Um, you can't just kind of um, switch it around. But if that's the address that qualifies for an SBA hub zone, and if that works with your business plan and strategy that you want to do business with the federal government and you already have an agency in mind, then that might be something that might be worth the time to do. Danny has a question. If a business owner is a disabled vet, would obtaining the disabled vet certification impact receiving my disability or any other payments a person would be receiving monthly from the government? Very, very great question. And it does not. Um, your personal disability payments and compensation 
um, does not impact you getting their certification or getting your veteran owned certification does not impact um, your, your benefits. Wonderful question, thank you. I own a virtual assistant company. I'm a home base. How would I verify if I don't have any of my utilities in my business name? Um, so if your, I was just using your utility bill as an example. Um, let's say your credit card bill, right? If you have a business credit card is in your business name at your home address, that would qualify as well. So you just need proof of something that your business is at that address. Um, that be your business taxes, um, your credit card statement, maybe uh, your bank information when you went to open up your business bank account, it's got that address. So in summary with that is, it just needs to be some sort of proof that that is indeed your business address. For example, I, I'm a home-based business and my credit cards come to this address, my bank information comes to this address, we have an, our invoice has this address on it, those types of things to show that this is indeed the address of the business. Uh, we already touched on a, a little bit on the NMSDC, which is the National Minority Supplier Development Council. That is a nonprofit um, that does certifications. They do the minority certification that is uh, widely accepted by supplier diversity departments. Live Nation, for example, the company that puts on all these con uh, concerts across the nation has a supplier diversity program. Uh, Target, Shell, the PGA has a supplier diversity program. Dell, um, there's tons and tons of different companies um, that have supplier diversity programs that are looking to hit their goal with the minority certification, as well as the WBENC, which is the National Women-Owned Certification. So if I'm a minority woman, I can get my, in summary, as we're wrapping up, I can get my WOSB, I can get my NM, NMSDC, as well as my WBENC or my WBEA certification. So you can stack um different certifications um, to benefit your business. But what I wanna make sure is, you know, you're not just getting certifications to get certifications. You wanna make sure that you're using them to help your business. Um, couple of questions here. I, I just put in the um, link for the, the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council um, certification. Renika, um, I'm not sure what's what's happening with the Houston Supplier, Houston Minority Supplier Diversity Council website. See if you've got the, the um, letters flipped. So it's just hmsdc.org. Is, is yeah, Houston. I can, and I can. Um, and I'll Sharonda can help with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up with you on that. Perfect. Thank Thanks you. For dropping in. Absolutely. Um, okay, what if you get a cert certification, then you move out of the country? How would that affect your certification, even if you operate your business virtually? Y'all are coming up with a lot of really good questions today. I'm so glad everyone's engaged. Your certification is dependent on, obviously, who you are and where you operate. Um and so some certifications might have limitations that you might have to be in the biz, um, in the country. Um, like with, if you want to get any SBA certifications, you need to be a U.S. resident. So I would make sure, once again, to figure out which certifications I want to get or maybe which certifications I have. And then once it's up for renewal, ask that question. Um, maybe... For example, your husband got assigned somewhere or your partner, and you're only going to be out of that country for a, a year. You're going to be an expat for a year, but then y'all plan to move back. Um, those are some pretty detailed questions um, that I, are, are certification um, specific. I've never been asked that one before, so thanks so much for, for, for asking that. So now we're going to do our little geography tour around the country. 
So shout out to my Georgia peeps that are here. Um, are, I'm going to put the um, links for the Georgia certifications in the chat. And I'm going to pause, actually, and answer um, a question that just came up. Can I give us give an example of us leveraging a certification to a supplier? Absolutely. Danny, put in the chat um, what your business does. Hi, Suze. Uh, Julie, sorry. <laughs> I was about to call you Susan. Let me just pop <laughs> in right quick. Um, please make sure when you're putting your questions in the chat, everyone, please make sure you're sending it to the the meeting group chat and not just to Julie so that I can help her um, to monitor any questions that come in. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. So Danny, I'll just use, I'll use a surveying company, for example. Um, if I have a surveying company and um, for example, um, Albertson's grocery store, HEB grocery store, um, Publix in, in Florida, and I know Publix is around the South as well, they all have supplier diversity goals. And so if they are looking to expand in a new area, they might, um, you could, when you register, and we're gonna talk about registrations, when you register um, on their site, um, mark supplier, you know, when you go to the supplier diversity site, mark that you're a surveying company and then also follow up so that you can help um, that grocery store chain or that retail chain um, hit their supplier diversity goals. In, in the government space, uh, for example, you could with the, the Department of Georgia Transportation, you know, maybe they're doing an expansion or some road construction or renovation um, of their buildings, right? Um, so either way, they would need a surveying company to maybe do a topo survey or a, or a meets and bounds survey. And you as your surveying company could go in either directly to the Department of Transportation or to a prime contractor to help meet that project goal. And yes, um, you guys will be receiving a list of, of all of this information and um, the session will be also recorded and you've got access um, to the B2G Victory Portal as well um, to get all of the links for all of these certifying agencies. So the state of Texas, um, they have a program called HUB, which stands for Historically Underutilized Business. And some of these words and phrases um, just are not real marketing friendly, are they? But it's what they're called. Um, the state of Texas has had this program since the 70s. Um, and they have hub goals. Back to Danny, your question. Um, you can see here on the slide that for heavy construction projects, they want to spend 11% with hubs. Um, you can go down here for all building construction is 21% with hubs. So the state of Texas, if it's a million dollar company, I mean, a million dollar project, 21% of that million dollars, that goal is to use state of Texas hub companies, right? And as we go down, you can see special trade constructions goes up to 32%. So what I want everybody to take out of the, the, the time that we've got together today is there are tons and tons and tons of opportunities available if you get your certification, but you just got to know how to use it and how to maximize it. Absolutely. And that's why we're here today. All right, New York, right? Where are my New York peeps? We're going all the way up. Um, so the state of New York has a program with the division of Minority and Women Business Development. That's what they call their division. So Texas was hub. New York is Division of Minority and Women Business Development. Same objective, same principle, just called something a little differently. And I wanted to make sure to point every single one of you in the right direction, either during this call or afterwards, so you can go and figure out 
what certifications work best for you, where do I go get them, and how can I use them to grow my business? We're going to come down now um, to Louisiana. All righty. So here is uh, the state of Louisiana has a program called the Hudson Initiative. And there's the link for the Hudson Initiative. So once again, we're talking about state certification. So there are over 200 state agencies in Louisiana that take the Hudson Initiative certification. So if I want to work, um, do work for a university, right, a state university in Louisiana, I would want to go get my Hudson Initiative certification. Coming on down and around and over to Alabama. Where are my Alabama people? Give me a shout out in the chat. Um, Alabama is the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs. So that department has an office of minority business enterprises. So if you're in Alabama and wanna do business with Alabama at the state and local level, this might be a certification uh, that would be of best interest to you and your um, your business, right? And then we're going to wrap up um, with the state of Texas. And we're going to go here with a few examples of state and local. So some certifications can be used on the state level as well as the local level. And the Texas Department of Transportation is a prime example of that. We even talked about the Georgia Department of Transportation. So there are state funds that are obviously used at the local level as well. So if you're in transportation and you want to do maybe something on a state road that goes through your local city, getting that certification might be beneficial to you. Um, here in Houston, so you've got certifications on the local level. For example, here's the city of Houston is the Office of Business Opportunity, as well as on the portal, um, you will need to find your NIGP codes or your NAICS codes. So NIGP codes, where do I go to find that? The fastest way to find your NIGP code is to look on your taxes. But when you do that, make sure that that is the correct NIGP code that describes your business and that your CPA didn't just find a random code and put it there. You are going to need to know your NIGP codes and your NAICS codes if you're going to do work in the federal or state government. Your NIGP codes will be critical when you are getting your certifications. All of your certifications will ask for your NIGP codes. Well, where do I go find that? How do I even figure that out? On the portal, we've got the glossary of what, I, what an NIGP code is, as well as the listing of every single NAIX code and NIGP codes. NAIX codes are general. NIGP codes are, are specific, much more specific. Um, in summary, NAIX codes are used on the federal level and for your certifications, NIGP codes are typically used on the state and the local level. We're gonna pause here. I see Sharonda put a great, great resource as well in the chat for your NIGP code and, and your NAIX codes. Is there any point or or content that I've covered that you wanna make sure if you have a question on or I need to go back over or a slide that y'all wanna see again. Okay. So now that we've talked about the different types of certifications and I've looked back at my business plan to see where are my target audience um, and what makes sense, now I wanna start getting my information together, right? So common certification sections, right? What, what, what do I need? And I encourage everyone 
to make a folder, whether it's on your Google Drive, on your local computer, up on OneDrive, wherever, it doesn't matter, but make sure that you're organized. That is criteria number one when you're dealing with certifications. Because remember I said 50% of the information you're gonna need for your certification, you're gonna use that not only if you wanna get one certification, but multiple certifications. Um, so make sure that you're organized and you can quickly access that information, especially if they come back with questions. So we're gonna break this up into a few um, different examples, as well as you can see that I kind of even have folders um, visually for you. This is common requested um, documents and an example. So legal documents, they are gonna ask for your legal documents. Well, why would they need to see my legal documents? Well, remember that slide when we talked about considerations, that 51% of owned, managed, controlled, all of that. Well, where do you go to prove all of that? Well, you go to your legal documents, your formation documents, your partnership agreements, your bylaws, your LLC agreement. That all explains in great detail that either the veteran, the woman, or the minority makes the financial decisions, that that veteran, woman, or minority makes the decisions regarding hiring and firing. Make sure that that, that certification that you're going after, that you have the authority to sign on the business bank account. All of those types of questions will be answered within these types of documents. Your EIN number, you're going to need to know your EIN, your, <laughs> you're going to need to know your EIN number as well as you know your own social security number if you're a business owner, right? Eventually you are going to need to be able to recite that and know that off the top of your head. Um, as well as your NAICS codes and your NIGP codes. So, you know, go to the resources that you've got available to you to find your codes. Um, and put those in a spreadsheet and, and use those. Um, so that kind of closes out our legal section. Financials. In order to get your certification, you are going to be asked for financial information. It could be up to three years of your tax returns. It could be just one year. It depends, right? Once again, it depends on the certification that you're going after. Sometimes when you're doing your renewals, they're going to ask for your most recent taxes, or they'll ask if there have been any changes to your legal agreement. Maybe you sold part of your company. Maybe you got another partner. Uh, maybe you now have your son or daughter in the business. That will all be indicated in the legal documents and supported in the financials. Your financial documents that are always going to be asked for is your balance sheet, your invoices, and statement of cash flow. And True Fund um, and I, we did a, a great session back uh, just earlier this month, actually, um, about understanding your financials. So we can also get you a recording of that session, which helps you understand why you need your financials and what all of that means for you and your business. They're going to also ask you for some copies of some invoices to prove that address, right? And to prove that you were actually transacting business. A couple of other things uh, that could be requested if they apply. So remember, I, we had a couple of y'all that were home-based businesses. I don't have an office lease, um, but I do. Um, I did indicate that, you know, I have a room in my house. It takes up 8% of the total square footage of our house. And the only thing that is used in that room is my business. It's not my business and a spare bedroom. It's not my business and a gym. It's, it is solely and strict, strictly related to this business. So there is a blog post um, on, um, on our website that is right there. And you can see that the graphic um, mirrors the same graphic that you saw in this presentation on how legal documents could impact your certification. So if you've got additional questions on those documents, go ahead and go there um, to the blog on our website 
And you've got some more information on that. I want to make sure to share mistakes to avoid because this can greatly impact your certification, right? It might impact um, whether you get your certification or not. And most importantly, the amount of time that it is going to take to get your certifications. So not understanding your own legal documents is the number one mistake that we, we have experienced um, with helping people get their certifications. And we've also heard the same thing back from certifying agencies. Is the, the second time anybody has ever looked over their legal documents is when it gets, gets when it gets kicked back for certification. Make sure that you have read and understand your legal documents. You may have worked with an attorney, you may have worked with counsel, or you may have gone to like legal zoom or whatever. Make sure that you understand what they say, that you just didn't sign on the dotted line and move on, okay? Because that dictates the ownership as well as the control and operator, operating terms of the business. The second thing we see a lot in mistakes regarding certification is, well, I'm going to apply for certification when I have an opportunity. Well, let's say you found this great opportunity and the bid is due in 30 days and they have a 30% um, goal, right? So maybe it's Hudson for Louisiana. Well, you're not going to be able to get your certification in 30 days to fulfill that goal on that contract. It takes longer than 30 days. Now, I'm not saying that you can't bid on it if you're not certified. You can bid on anything um, in, in the government space without being certified. But having a certification gives you an advantage. It helps fulfill that goal. A lot of certifications have a time ticker, tick, 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 tick. When you go on their website to set up your account, that time starts now. A lot of certifications will only keep your profile open for 90 days. So go to the website, find out what that criteria is. They all have it very, very clearly indicated. Get it all together. Once it's all together, then go set up a profile. The first time I went to get my certification as a woman-owned business back in 2000, I hit the button. I was so excited. I was like, let's do this, WBENC. We're going to get this certification. Well, day 90 came. I had two of the documents all collected, and I got that email that your account is now closed. If you wish to apply for certification, you're going to need to set up a new account. So don't do what I did over 20 years ago. Get everything ready, then start the process. Because that timer, like I said, just starts ticking, 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 and you want to make sure to be ready. We started our time together with this, um, and I really want to stress this um, again, that your certifications don't match your business goals. We interact with so many small women and minority-owned businesses, and they'll be like, I have the certification. And I'm like, great. Why do you have it? I don't know. Somebody told me I needed to get it. Okay, well, have you used your certification? Have you told anybody that you have the certification? No, nope, but I have it. Does who accepts your certification, do they even buy what you do? Oh, I don't know, but I got the certification. So once again, your certification needs to match your business goals or you have just wasted all of that time and maybe even some money. Um, to get that certification. So really think about where your business is now, where you want it to be in a year, where you want it to be in three years or five years and, and chart that path and get the certification that is relevant to your business and your business goals. I uh, got another question um, from, from uh, the chat. Are local certs considered a DBE? Some local certifications have a DBE program, which is a disadvantaged business enterprise. Some local certifications, if, for example, TxDOT here in Texas has a DBE. So if you have the TxDOT 
DBE certification, then the Port Houston here in Houston will accept it. So there is some rep reciprocity between agencies regarding certification. And we're actually working on a crazy matrix to help people understand exactly what you just asked. If I have this certification, well, how do I maximize it? Who takes it and how can I leverage it um, for my business? All righty, um, wrapping this up. Um, so, oh, last thing on certification mistakes is an owner's outdated resume or LinkedIn. The certification review committee will go and look at your LinkedIn. If your LinkedIn says that you still work for a big corporate company and you left there seven years ago, and it says absolutely nothing about the business that you've had for seven years, well, how can I confirm that you own it, that you control it, that you're in the day-to-day -day operations of that business? Also, you will be asked for a resume, an owner's resume with your certification. That resume needs to reflect what you do for that business. This isn't a job application resume. So we see a lot of certifications get kicked back because they have nothing about what they do for their business. Even if you just started your business a month ago or a year ago, what do you do for your business? And that must be on your resume for certification. And then there's a, a blog post and, and we really try at B2G to help um, make things familiar. So if there's a graphic that we use in the presentation, we, um, we put it on the blog post. You can see right there, those common mistakes. I only went over five of them. There's actually 10 um, of them there in, in the blog post for you. So now what, right? Well, we only have a little less than an hour together and we've got our certifications covered. Now, what do we do with them? We target our top five clients, right? Who are those top five companies that I want to do business with, right? Going back to my business plan and my business strategy. Well, what questions do I ask myself to help make sure that that is a good fit for my business? Well, who are the buyers? What do they buy? When, when do they buy your goods and services? And why do you do, why do you want to do business with them? This can be a huge differentiator once you're starting to establish that relationship with those buyers and you're meeting them at networking opportunities and you're meeting them at different educational events and pre-bids and those types of things that are um, on our events calendar. There was a question, go back to the now what slide. There you go, now what? Okay, so how do I know to register? Where do I go? And thank you so much, Sharonda. Yes, um, you should create a capability statement for your business, um, especially if you're interested in federal contracting. Any, any business, whether it's federal, state, local, or with a big corporation, you're going to need a capability statement. We have an entire video. We've got 10 different videos on the capability statements um, session um, on, on our website as well. Um, so target your top five clients. Who are the buyers? What do they buy? When do they buy your goods and services? And why do you want to do business with them? We've got all of our information ready. Now let's go register. And when you're going to register for these different websites, just like Sharonda said, um, a lot of this information that you're going to need to register is the same information that you're going to need for your certifications, which guess what, is the same information you're going to need for your capability statement. So make sure that you are super, super organized. We're going to follow that same pattern and cadence that we've, we've had so far. We're going to start at the national or federal level, and then I'm going to go around to all of the different states um, that true fund services. So Sam, Sam is not a guy or a girl. Sam is sam.gov, which is the system for awards management. If you want to do work at the federal level, right? So what federal agency do you want to do work with? Is that the Department of Defense? Is that FEMA? Is that the Department of Treasury? 
Um, what federal agency do you want to do work for? Maybe it's the Air Force. I don't know. But think about what federal agency you want to you want to sell to. Maybe it's Athes. Maybe you're in retail and you want to start getting um, your product into the commissaries or, or the Athes, right? You would need to be in SAM.gov. All right. So state of Alabama, give me a minute and I'm going to start putting these um, in the chat as well. So you've got the state of Alabama has vendor resources. So you're going to need to be registered there. Another big benefit to getting registered on these sites. So you're going to need to get your certification and then do the registration. They are very different. When you get registered, you are going to get notifications of bid opportunities. So back to those NAICS codes and those NIGP codes that you were using on your capability statement and your certifications. When you go to these respective sites, and you register, you're going to use those same codes so that when a buyer, right, back to that target customer, when that buyer puts in that they need this product or service, then you're going to get an email. So it all really is this awesome ecosystem of getting your certifications, doing your registration, and then responding to opportunities that can definitely help change the trajectory of your business. So how do I find out what those buyers are? Well, guess what? Right here on that same website that I just put um, in the chat. So there's the purchasing at State of Alabama. Well, if I take it one step further and I go to staff, there they are. So there are the buyers that are listed. This is all public information. This is all of your local tax dollars. If you live in the state of Alabama, that you can benefit from doing business with the state of Alabama, okay? And we're here as well as the team at True Fund um, to help with additional questions, obviously after, after today. We're going through a lot of information really quickly, but it is all achievable and digestible and you can definitely win contracts off of it. Louisiana. So Louisiana calls it the Office of State Procurement, right? And so I am purchasing something. Louisiana is procuring it. And so there you go. Um, the Office of State Procurement. So then they have it all there. Well, guess what? Here you go. Are you ready for it? Here is the staff directory for the buyers in Louisiana. So there's the staff directory. You click on the link. Um, and you can find out who the different buyers are. And buyers are typically grouped into similar types of products and services. So you might have a technology buyer. You might have what's called like an FF and E buyer, which is furnitures, fixtures, and equipment. Um, you might have an administrative buyer, which buys office supplies and those types of things. Um, in the school districts, maybe you want to do business with your local school district. You might have a curriculum buyer or a transportation buyer. Those types of things will all be detailed and outlined on the respective website. So I'm just going at the state level here. Our Georgia peach people, right? Lovely, lovely state of Georgia. How do I do business with the state of Georgia? Well, guess what? There it is right there. And that's what the website looks like doing business with the state of Georgia. And once again, here is the procurement team. So you've got your senior buyer. Um, and these people, their day-to-day -day job is to help the state of Georgia purchase things. So if you have any questions on who to reach out to or why, you can go straight to the state. You can go to Sharonda or you can go to us. Like I said, there is a whole lot of people who want to help you be successful. Got a question um, in the chat from Tracy. Is the capability statement the same as a feasibility assessment statement? They are slightly different. Um, there are examples of um, capability statements um, up on our website. I will include um, that link in, in the email afterwards. I don't have any examples of a capability statement in this presentation. Um, but there's tons of information on a capability statement on our blog, as well as um, in the free videos. 
So typically a capability statement is just a single page document, whether it's printed or, or PDF and has certain criteria with your NAICS codes, your insurance information, your capacity, your contact information um, on it as well. A lot of the same information that you're gonna use when you register your company. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, thank you everyone for all of the great questions and engagement. Going up, uh, so we were down in Louisiana, Georgia and Alabama, now we're gonna pop all the way back up to New York. Um, so New York, um, procurement is handled with the Office of General Services. So you can go to that website and you'll see here that the Office of General Services has real estate design and construction procurement support and do business and all of that. So at your leisure, maybe it's something next week, maybe it's something next quarter that you're going to do and go check out the respective state um, that you want to do business with, right? And if it makes sense. All righty, and closing out with our state stuff is here in Texas, which is the CMBL, which stands for the Centralized Master's Bidder List. So you're going to want to get registered on the CMBL. Now, a lot of these states, you can be registered. So I don't want you to think that you have to wait to get your certifications in order to be registered. You can register, set up a profile then you can go back and add your certifications, all righty? So don't feel like that there are these roadblocks or barriers for you to move your business along with doing government contracting or doing business with the large Fortune 500 company. Um, you can go ahead and set up a profile, set up your registration, and then go back and add your certifications. Okay, That's also a big common misconception. And Alabama. So Alabama has the Department of Finance. And let me get you that. And like I said, all of these links are also available um, all together um, on our portal. I was just sectioning them off. So maybe you want to do business in New Mexico. Well, we've got all of that link um, for every 50 states in the nation um, on on the portal. Just wanted to make sure to give examples as we went through. So there's Alabama, and then there is the Alabama uh, purchasing staff as well. We're going to just drop that in the chat, and there you go. Okay, so now we've gotten our certifications. They're in process. We've done our registrations. They're done, and we can go back and update them. So now let's go ahead and let's research opportunities, right? So how do I find out who's buying what? Remember I said, you gotta identify those buyers. You've got to um, figure out what they're buying. Well, that's all great, Julie, but where do I go to find that information out? Um, we're gonna go through these very quickly in our, in our, in our same um, format, the federal event in each respective state. Well, we were just here before, and here is SAM.gov, right? So not only on SAM.gov can you register, you can also find out who buys what, right? So there it is on SAM.gov, but then there's also another amazing website that's called USAspending.gov. And on this website, it will tell you, um, how much each respective federal agency has spent historically, who those um, who it was awarded to, and what their projected budget is. So maybe I want to do work for the Department of Ed Education, the DOE. I could go here to USAspending.gov and look at all of the historic spending um, that the Department of Education has done. Great, great resources that are all free to you as a taxpayer and as a business owner to see who is spending what. And then also you can get um, copies and pricing of what they're spending. So in the government space, you're able to see, does this really make sense for me? Is that price point profitable? Don't ever do a project 
at a loss. That is one of the absolute worst business decisions and worst business mentalities out there because if you continue to do it at, at a loss, you're not going to be in business for much longer. So we went federal. Now let's go to Texas. Uh, Texas, if I'm going to do research, I'm going to go to Texas Smart Buy. And I can see here that it's um, under the Texas Comptroller of Accounts. So where do I find bids or under solicitations? Just like in SAM, right? I can find bids in SAM. I can register in SAM. I can research in SAM. Here on the state of Texas, I can find current bids that are out. That's a solicitation. And then awards, no solicitation or awards and solicitation. So I can go and look by what agency or what keyword. Maybe that's a specific word. Maybe that's travel, right? Maybe I'm a travel agent, a travel agency, and I want to see if there are opportunities for me. And there are. Uh, we saw last week about three different opportunities from different universities in the state of Texas looking for a travel agency to put together um, an international trip uh, for, for a, a group of, of students and faculty. So pretty cool. So don't assume that the government doesn't buy what you do. Uh, Alabama has their STARS system, so it's there. Um, where you can do your research as well. Uh, Louisiana has its site where you go and look for open bids as well. Um, and you can see what's been opened or what's closed, right, to do your research. Um, Georgia, going back to Georgia, um, you can go and search for bids there. So make sure to do your research um, depending on who your target customer is, maybe that's a state, um, or your local agency. Um, so here is New York. And as you can see, each state's website kind of looks a little different, but it's all with the same information, right? These are the contracts that either are out or these are the contracts that have been awarded. So um, you can navigate those respective um, state websites to help you do your research to see what the historic spend is or what the spend is out there. So let's talk about money, right? As we wrap up, we've got about 30 minutes left um, and I'm gonna go through just some spend, some examples. So the state of Texas has 200 agencies under its umbrella. So if it makes sense for my business to get the state of Texas hub certification, um, the state of Texas spent $51.8 billion in 2023. So there are 23 agencies. So how do I find out? Um, I can go to the um, electronics, the ESBD, right? So the Texas Smart Buy where we just were. Um, but also we can see um, the results, right? And so here are um, opportunities. So I'm here in the solicitation. So what is out there right now in Texas, right? Because I want to, I want to win some contracts. So I'm here and I'm looking, and you can just see these um, example of these these two bids, right? But I can drill down, and you can see that there's one of five pages. So once I find an opportunity. And maybe even if it's passed, maybe I missed it, right? Maybe it closed last week. Oh, it seemed like the perfect opportunity. Well, back to here is the buyer. The contact name is the buyer for those goods and services. So maybe I provide something that is adjacent to what that bid was. Maybe instead of doing catering, I do... Um, I do um, like holiday decorating, right? Because we're actually helping somebody right now um, put together a bid for holiday decor for, for a school. Um, so maybe this was for catering, but decorating and catering, those typically think and work together. So that might be the same buyer. Um, so you might want to reach out to them. Here is the example for this specific opportunity. It's an RFQ. Um, and what is it for? It details what it's for. It tells you all of that information. Um, 
Got another question in the chat. Can we get certs in different states? Each state's certification is um, a little bit different. Some say you have to have at least an office in that state. So maybe you're based out of New York, but you also have an office in Louisiana. Then you might be eligible for the Louisiana Hudson Initiative certification. Um, some cities, uh, for example, New Orleans, you have to have your primary office in New Orleans to get the city of New Orleans certification. So they wanna make sure that that's where your primary business is. Um, wonderful question. I'm really glad that you asked that. And so once again, you just got to look at the specific certification criteria um, if you want to be certified in multiple states. Uh, we have a client who is based out of Florida and he has a sizable Texas office. The corporation was set up in Florida, but he is um, you know, filed with the Secretary of State here in Houston. He does have a business address in Houston, and he has a whole entire team and crew doing construction work here in Houston. So he was eligible and able to get certifications from both states. If you've got other questions about that, we, we can take that offline. Absolutely. If there are specific states in, in question, we can help you look at, at that detail. So we talked about um, state certifications and federal, as well as opportunities and registrations. I want to take it down even to a more granular level that might be a little bit more achievable for some of y'all, which is on the local level. So what government agencies, what are some examples of government agencies on the local level, right? So here in Houston, you've got Harris County, right? Um, Fort Bend Independent School District. Um, a community college, all of these types of entities, government entities will have um, small business goals, minority goals, or women-owned goals. And if they are not a certifying agency, they will accept a certification on either the state, local, or federal uh, level. For example, um, Houston Independent School District will take your National Minority Supplier Diversity Council certification, your minority certification, or they'll also take um, your city of Houston certification, or they'll also take um, your state of Texas certification. So when you're doing your research, look at what certifications does that specific entity accept. And then once again, that'll help navigate you to the right path and the right certification so you can maximize it and it's not just wall art. Dallas, um, we're gonna, like I said, take a, a really granular local look here in Dallas. So Dallas College, City of Dallas, DART, which is Dallas's metro, um, just like in Atlanta, Marta is the metro there. So maybe if you're just starting out in this, talk to your local school district. See, do they buy what you sell? Talk to your local city, talk to the county. I almost guarantee you that what each of you sells, some government agency buys, which will help you diversify your business. All right, um, rounding out here in Texas, also um, San Antonio area, got a college example there, Alamo, um, the county, which is Bear County, VO, which is, which is their transportation. Louisiana spent $12.4 billion in 2023. In Louisiana, um, if you get the Hudson Initiative certification, there are 21 agencies that definitely you can leverage your certification with. Um, but then also some of these cities will also accept your Hudson Initiative certification or they might have their own local certification. I use the city of New Orleans as, as an example, but maybe you're in Shreveport, maybe you're in Lafayette, right? So reach out to them and see if they accept the Hudson Initiative certification or if they have their own, because if they have their own certification, 50% of the information that you use to get your Hudson will be used to get one of these local certifications. Even going a little bit farther within the city of New Orleans, you've got the New Orleans Public School Districts um, and Delgado 
community college, those types of things. So I want everyone to take away from our time today that your certifications and opportunities and contracts are available for each and every one of you on the local, state, and federal level. I don't want you to be discouraged if you're like, well, I didn't win that big federal million dollar contract. There are so many other opportunities for you to grow and diversify your business. Here's Baton Rouge, right? You could do work with uh, Baton Rouge Community College or the Capital Area Transit System or the port. Just like there's the port of Houston, there's the port of Greater Baton Rouge, there's the port of Louisiana. Um, and ports are businesses. They need office supplies. They need safety equipment. They need IT. So every one of these government agencies is also a business. They operate. They have employees. They need those types of things. They need training for those employees. All of those um, are great examples. All right, we are going to just continue to go through these relevant examples. Um, so here's Louisiana, Lafayette, Georgia. Let's go to the Georgia, right? Great state of Georgia spent 62.5 billion dollars. That's what the B y'all billion. Um, and they have 80 plus state agencies. That's just in 2023. 62.5 billion dollars in the state of Georgia. Well, when you go to the Team Georgia Marketplace, which is handled by the Department of Administrative Services, right there, I've got the news and announcements, how I can bid, and then where I need to register. So they put that all together in one place. Um, I'm going to put a little red bow right there on that for you. Um, so I'm going to get the Georgia certification. And the three largest cities in Georgia are Columbus, Atlanta, and Augusta. Right? They are going to need and accept your certifications and need the goods and services that, that you provide. Take a deeper dive into Atlanta, Atlanta Public Schools, you've got MARTA, and then um, you've got your county, your DeKalb County. So you can see this pattern that I'm showing y'all is at the federal, state, and local level, and then examples at the local level of either education, whether that's K through 12 or higher ed, that specific or respective city, or the county, you might also have a MUD district, a municipal utility district as, as well. Um, so here's Augusta. You've got the Richmond County Schools, uh, Columbus. You've got you know um, the city as well as the county and the transportation as well. And then Georgia ports. So if you're in the state of Georgia, Port of Savannah, Port of Brunswick, Port Bainbridge, and the Appalachian Regional Port. So other, other examples um, that I wanted to make sure that I showed y'all that you can see that these are examples on all the different levels. And um, we've got a post in the chat. I have a small emerging business entity cert through the Department of Transportation, Department of Transportation in Louisiana. Awesome job. Alabama, 215 state agencies in Alabama, totaling $37 billion, three largest cities. And I also, I'm showing big, large cities, but maybe you live in a small city. I live here in Tomball, Texas. It's, it's a suburb outside of Houston. So go to your local city's website and, and look for doing business with or procurement or purchasing are those kind of three key phrases and see how you can do business with your local city because then you can get experience. Once you get experience, then you can go get more experience and you can grow and scale. So don't feel like you have to go big in the beginning. You can go small and incremental. That is totally, totally fine. All right, so just kind of continuing that um, with Mobile, Alabama, you've got your county, you've got your transportation, um, higher ed and schools, Huntsville, Huntsville City Schools, and the community college in Madison County, New York. And we're getting ready to close this out. So in the state of New York, uh, 96 agencies in New York. And the state of New York even gives you a great website um, that you can um, that you can go to. And just like these other ones that list out 
every single one of those agencies. So each one of those states has something similar to this. So you can see the 96 agencies. And what I like about New York is, is it's broken it down in these filters by administrative, business, education, healthcare. We didn't even talk about healthcare opportunities, um, public safety, construction, all of that. Um, whew, we went through a whole lot of information on why you need a certification, the benefits that your business can get from those certifications, how you can register, register now, and then go back and add your certification. So don't let that be a barrier to entry. And then where you can go find contracts and opportunities, as well as the direct links for those agencies. We talked about people having their certifications and not maximizing it. Well, if you've got your certification, you should be leveraging that, maximizing that, and using every opportunity with that certification to help you get your foot in the door. I want to reiterate that just because you have a certification does not guarantee you a contract. You've still got to do the work. You still have to prove that you can do the work, but it definitely gives you an advantage. There are additional opportunities for businesses that have their certification. Well, if I've got my certification, what are some ways to market it? We're going to go over these um, pretty quickly, and um, there's a whole list of them as well as a video um, on, on, our, on our website for these. So, We've talked already about a few of these, your capability statement. Make sure that your capability statement has your certification, your business cards, websites, social media, your ads, your invoices. We even put on our invoices because our invoices go to purchasing departments that we are certified, right? Well, those purchasing departments sometimes are the same buyers and the same people who process the invoices that purchase the goods and services, right? So we're gonna just go through a couple of these. Um, this is your certification checklist on ways to market it. And I'm gonna just show you some examples of ways that our clients have communicated their certifications. On our capability statement, you can see there, they've got um, Greg with Honesty Construction has his certifications listed in the order of national, state, and then local as well as his certification numbers. Um, here's one of our favorite chefs in the world, um, Yolanda with Nuke Skis, and she has her certifications there listed as well on her capability statement. You can put your certifications on your business cards. Um, Meg's got it right there. So she's WBE certified through the NWBOC. Um, Make sure that you put your certifications on your website. And when you're putting them on your website, link to your specific company profile, right? So if I, um, here is um, a company and they're WBENC certified, so they have the national, they've got the city of Houston, which is local, and they've got their minority as well as their state of Texas hub. When you click on each one of them, it takes them to that company's profile within that certifying agency. Because remember, I talked about one of the benefits of getting certification is being listed in these directories. will make it easy for people to find you in those respective directories when they're looking to do business with a certified company that provides the goods and services that they're looking for. Your trade show materials, maybe you've got a big banner pop-up or some flyers, you can put it on that. Um, here's some examples there. I mean, as you can see, um, Blue Sky is pretty consistent with those two certifications. One is an industry certification. One's their woman-owned certification that they have that on their business cards, on their trade shows, and their flyers. So it should just be an additional component when you're doing all of your marketing material. Make sure to include your certification. Social media. How many of you, and go ahead and put it in the chat, so put in the chat whether you have your certifications currently listed on your social media. So go ahead and put that in the chat if you currently have them. If you don't, 
We're going to hold each other accountable. And I want you to put in the chat when you will be updating your social media to put your certifications on there. All righty, as we wrap up. Handouts and flyers, um, you can put it on that. Uh, brochures, you can list it on your brochures. And vehicle graphics. Um, here's an example. Susan and I were actually out to lunch one day and we saw um, this coffee company um, at, at parked a couple um, rows down from, from where we were having lunch. And sure enough, right there, they have that they're a woman-owned certification on, on their vehicle. Um, so we were really excited to be able to see that and then put that in, in, in our presentations for y'all. A newsletter, maybe you're doing an email blast, put it in your newsletter so everybody knows and stand and say it loud and proud that you are either a woman-owned, small business, um, minority-owned business, whatever. And all of those certifications, make sure that you have them. And to summarize um, this last marketing session, certification has to be a lot more than just wall art. If you've earned that piece of paper, if you're proud of that certification, make sure that you're marketing it. And the blog post um, on our website, you can see right there, it's got um, the slide that matches regarding marketing your certification. And it has that exact checklist that, that I went through on those two slides ready for you um, to use so that when you're implementing it, you can go and use that as, as a checklist. So wrapping everything up, your certification success is dependent on your business plan, your business model, and your business focus. So make sure that the certifications that you get support your business plan, your business model, and your focus. I'm gonna turn it back over to Sharonda as I take a drink of water um, and we'll open the floor for any additional questions that y'all have. Thank you so much, Julie. This was fantastic information, uh, uh, just a treasure trove of knowledge for all of our participants. Um, is does anyone have any questions? Want to make any comments? Um, share your thoughts. Feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand, or, or put your question in the chat, and we'll read it out loud. Um, well, I had a comment. First of all, this is like a blueprint to success for my small business because I offer some of these services. And one of the things that you said about updating the LinkedIn, I haven't actually shared my business itself on my LinkedIn, um, which people ask me a lot. So now I'm going to do that. But I had a question about one particular thing that wasn't mentioned. Um, what is your feeling about the transparency acts that are now required for LLCs, depending on the date? Um, is there a course offering that you have that covers that information? Because that's Im important also. And it's very new. Right. It it is. And and there's confusion around that as well as um hesitancy right. to, 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 to do that as 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 well. Um we are in the process of creating some some content and information um regarding the Transparency Act. Mm -hmm. Um it should be out, I would say, within the next month or so. Right. Um, but but yeah, and I think, you know, most or some people, if if you have a hesitancy about whether you are or are not going to disclose that information, I would definitely talk to your counsel. Um, mm -hmm. I always have a little disclaimer. I'm not an attorney and I'm not. Right, a right, 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 right. Um, but I have friends that are. Um, and, and, and so I, I would definitely... Um, turn that over um, to, to either one of them with the pros and cons of the Transparency Act right. and, and, and whether there, you're going to do that or not. Right. And and that's kind of, I just wanted to see where it was on your radar because mm -hmm. there are a couple of states that have already sued and mm -hmm. they don't have to to do it. Mm -hmm. I just really want to know what you guys were doing. So I look forward to hearing that information. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Really and, good. No, thank you. Thank you so much for, for the positive feedback. Um, but yeah, it is it is a state by state um, consideration. And since we have so many different states here on the call, right. um, 
I, I don't want anyone to misinterpret if I gave an example of a specific state and they only heard part of that and thought that that applied to them if they live in a different state. Does right. that make sense? Yes, mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Miss McLean, you have a question? Hey, thank you guys so much, Julie. Um, Sharonda, you guys have done a great job. I'm blown away. So um, one, this has been uh, something that's been on my the list to get my certification forever. And I think what happens is you get kind of overwhelmed of the information shared. And, you know, like I said before, you have people calling you saying, hey, you know, I can get you certified. You're not for sure if it's a scam or not. So it's just really kind of scary in that, um, you know, essence. Um, so I just wanted to see if you could, number one, talk on mindset of you know, from a preparation standpoint of getting this done. And then the second is, for me, being in a commercial space, I think it's hard for me to kind of uh, differentiate what exactly I am offering um, from this perspective. So do you have uh, any thoughts or suggestions? And that's why I was saying when you went back to that slot that said, now what? I wanted to see that next slide when you it showed like the target audience or what have you. So I'm just in my mind trying to figure out how does that tar target audience fit with my need and some of the things that I'm trying to do in regards to that. So I was thinking in regards to the commercial side, is it office space that I target, uh, et cetera. So I'm just trying to figure that part out. So can you speak on mindset and trying to figure out what does that look like for uh, certification and how I can actually serve? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, first, when I went back to that slide, did you get what you needed? Do I, do I need to go back to that slide again for you? Um, it was the after the now what slide. Okay, um, let me go to that one. It was this one? Yes. Yeah, so I was just, yeah. And I was, yeah, when you had, Okay. I guess it, it relates or not really. I wasn't for sure like how Home Depot, I guess this was just an example in regards to um, target right. clients. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, this is okay. just examples, right? So I'm giving you examples of different government agencies on the local level and the state level or transportation, as well as like Home Depot, they have a supplier diversity program. So if you want to do business with Home Depot um, and, and put things, you know, in the, the Home Depot or provide services to Home Depot as a business, right? Maybe you do training, maybe you sell insurance, maybe you sell office supplies. Well, Home Depot needs all of those types of services as well. Maybe you're in IT. Um, so large corporations will accept your certifications as well um, and potentially could buy um, your goods and services. Or maybe you do construction and you do build outs. And so maybe if there's Home Depot is looking to expand or open up another um, store in your area. They're going to want some small businesses to help with the construction of that store. Of that store, maybe it's land clearing, maybe it's uh, landscape maintenance. Once the store is built, all of those types of things, um, whether it's a local government agency, state or federal, or a big um, Fortune 500 company you can use your certifications. What's your, what's your business? So I'm a, a commercial broker. I'm a realtor here in Atlanta. Huh. And um, hmm. my, my only thing is I'm, my mind is everywhere. So it's like, okay, um, you know, it's, I'm just trying to figure it out right now in regards to from a certification okay. standpoint. So we actually have a client that is a real estate broker um, here in Houston, and um, they help negotiate um, for HEB, which is a grocery store chain. They help HEB find land. They help broker the deals. They, um, they've responded to um, Texas Southern TSU when TSU is looking to either acquire or dispose of, of either assets or land. Um, they use a Texas certified hub business that is in real estate and, and is also a, a broker to, to do those transactions. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I'm also a realtor as well. I do commercial real estate and residential real estate. And I, um, I'm i registered with 
a company called Bonfire. Mm -hmm. um, I have the free version, not the paid version. And you can sign up with Bonfire and you can get um, notifications of different opportunities. You can choose the agencies that you want to receive the notifications from. And um, on a daily basis, I see notifications. They're looking for um, local school districts oftentimes will be selling buildings or look, looking to purchase land or purchase buildings. Um, so there are opportunities for you. So, um, you know, in contracting, believe it or not, there are a plethora of opportunities from janitorial to even catering, um, catering, uh, clothing. Uh, I noticed someone in the chat uh, um, sells, I think she said shoes or something or clothes. Mm -hmm. um, you, you would not, you will be amazed at the opportunities afforded to each type of business in the contracting space. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, one last, one last question on that is, um, and, and this was just another thought. Um, and I was talking to somebody yesterday about hotel vendors, like, um, you know, hotels, like for instance, those small boutiques, like if they are looking for a vendor, um, you know, like a, a DEI vendor that, you know, um, they've been hired to you know, just throwing something out there, for instance, like uh, soap or uh, towels or something like that. Is there something that relates to, to that as well? They're all yes. I've yes. seen I've seen so many different opportunities. Mm -hmm. okay. you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Yep, there's a um a certified woman owned business, and she got her WBEA certification. They have an office here in Houston. They've got an office in California, an office I think in Chicago, and another office somewhere on the East Coast. And she provides all of the towels for. Um, quite a few hotels in the Hilton chain, as well as Delta Airlines, the little warm little towels that they, they that you get in first class. And, and she was able to secure those contracts in those opportunities because she got that certification. It opened those doors so she knew who to talk to within those large, large companies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you guys... Um have uh in Sharonda I'm definitely going to give you a call but do you have those names for the other the agent who's doing it because it, it would be nice to have relative conversation or partnership to say okay we're doing the same thing but what other opportunities we can tackle together yep I, I, absolutely and and I, I love what just came into the chat about teaming together to um execute contracts right. absolutely this mm -hmm. is one of the few spaces where Combining forces, um, everyone benefits at exponentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Um, as we're wrapping up, um, if everyone could put maybe their top one or two things uh, that you got out of the session today, uh, and those one or two things could also be... Um, things that are in your victory plan, something that you got out of today, and most importantly, when are you going to implement it into your business? Um, the easiest way to make things not so overwhelming is, is to kind of chunk them out. And so we, we covered a plethora of, of, of information today. Sharonda, what did you call it? A treasure trove of, mm -hmm. of, of information. Treasure trove, a plethora. Um, I'm all a about turn. Lot of, I, I, love, I love to turn a phrase. Okay. <laughs> um, so please go ahead and, and put that in the chat. Um, what you got out of today, as well as when you're going to implement it in um into your business. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, Sharonda, do you want to close us out or have any other comments? So I'm glad you asked, Julie. So we are True Fund at our core. We are a lender. So let's talk about, I know we probably only have two minutes left, but we are a lender and we do offer um, contract mobilization loans. So if you have been in business at least a year and you're interested in bidding on contracts and you want to learn more 
about getting access to capital to help serve service those contracts to get started on those contracts or if you just need a small business loan to bolster your business please feel free to complete the link in the chat um so that we can contact you with more information and assist you in that regard mm -hmm. so we have one more minute left with that being said does anyone have any other questions what, or one Julie question or myself Mm -hmm. One question. Shoot. Are you down are you downloading the chat so that it can be sent out? I can't figure out how to do it from my phone. Yes, yes. I will send out I will uh, send out the the transcript of the chat as well to everyone who has joined us today. Excellent. And one more comment. I have been working with you guys for two or three years. I have multiple clients approved through loans. One was approved yesterday from your New York office for $100,000. So the lending actually works. That's a service I provide through you all. Fantastic. Did you guys yeah. hear that testimonial? Through, through, honey, through did y'all hear it? And I, I, have, did. I heard I have, it. You can repeat it again. Yeah, I have two people who just finished their application today, one for 150, one for 100, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be approved. So, and and I'm just excited. I work with Jephtha through the New York office and he rocks. That is awesome. Thank you he so much. He absolutely does. Okay. So guys, any other questions before we go? I know that we had um Mr. DeBose DeBrose in the comments. Did you have a question or a comment? No? Okay. So with that being said, it is one o'clock PM Central Standard Time. I would like to thank Julie Hartman with B2G Victory for her um, information today. We appreciate her tons. We appreciate her immensely. Once again, I'm Sharonda Hill, your hostess with Truth, Truth on Financial Services. Be on the lookout for invitations to our other um, no-cost national webinar, webinar presentations that we host most Wednesdays throughout the month. Again, thank you for joining and have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much.